Okay, okay. So we're in the challenge mode lobby at the moment. Just gonna quickly go through the gear. I do have full ancestral and a shadow and a mega's ring that does speed up runes or Vanguard, Vespula, and Orm. But is more than good enough. I started off with Bofa and I'm gonna finish with Bofa. It's really good in most of the rooms. That's what you'd use to set the shadow. I'll just bring the shadow because I got it. I got disgustingly lucky on getting full ancestral early. But this is what I bring. These aren't the most efficient raids. They're not the fastest raids. I'm just sort of talking you through how I sort of maximize points and get sort of between 67 and 68,000 points per raid. Usually you get about 59, 61, I believe, if you don't milk the points. So, yeah, I'm just going to do sort of a, a live con. Apologies, I might not be the most interesting person, but I'll do my best. I'm not used to this whole talking to myself thing. But, you know, let me just get on with it. A few of my friends asked how I get so many points because they sort of do challenge modes and look at my points when I finish them and just think, what the hell? <laughs> so, uh, we'll sum up raw here. I like to do the whole step back method. Probably the most consistent. Then use all my run energy up. Two Dragon Ball Hammer specs is nice. I got that on Slash. As of the time of this recording, the Slash is bugged using the Fang. It is the 31st of May. March, sorry. May? Where am I getting that from? Bloody May. Just run around, Tecton as usual. He's always good fun. You just the practice this. This is nice to learn if you're in a group. If you're in a sort of duo with a friend, Tecton can be a bit crazy, but you can have a friend stand on that row there that my mouse cursor is on. And he won't have to move and he'll never get hit. I think he might have to be in the back tiles. But as long as you learn this, then Tecton becomes a breeze. Just get someone to bring a BGS with you and you're living the dream. It usually dies in about three or four downs unless you get super, super unlucky. Sometimes you do. Up to you whether you want to reset if you don't get two Dragon War Hammers, but compared to the past, this is a, the easiest the game's ever been. Oh god, that's a hit. Can bring Venge, I bring Thralls. It's dead, so I drink the restore, just get rid of that. Pick up the overload, the enhance as well as the restore. We run in here, and what I like to do is drop the overload next to that tile. So then that frees up an inventory space to grab the bow. Shoot that, shoot, just shoot the three that's closest to you. Usually they lose aggro, which is annoying, but he shouldn't be too much. Equip the Dragon Warhammer, run over here. Smash that one. Smash that one. That's mildly annoying. Done that. At least it shows you that even with mistakes, you can still get the raid done in good time. Oh, my poor shadow charges. I wish there was a way to unfreeze the crabs. again. With you. So as you can see, with mistakes, you're completely fine with time. One of the worst crabs I have ever done. You see it. That. Thirty seconds left on that. So we're gonna wait by the door. That was insanely rubbish. <laughs> it was the thing with the whole live com stuff is you just kind of forget how to play. You just miss things left, right, and centre. The things that sort of like automatically where they go. I tried streaming last week for the first time, and that was just awkward as hell because you have like one or two people watching you. They know nothing about you. And obviously, no one chats. 
a new streamer and you just have to talk to yourself like people are listening. So personally, I like to do this until I get a lockpick and 20 juice or around about 20 juice and 10 mushrooms. I think that'll be enough. Yeah, actually I'll just kill this one more. Basically until the divine runs out. I like to use the uh, Dragon Hunt Lance because it's four tick. So I'll run over here. This is what I do is I drop a stamina potion, equip all my magic gear, put all my melee gear in first so that gives me the room to pick stuff up. Like that, grab that, and then I'll just run back and uh, get the stuff. See if we get an iron axe, let's see if we get absolutely blessed. Mushroom. Uh, lock pick. We get an iron axe, don't matter. Cool. So, this is where the mummy milking begins. You can chop five lots of logs. And the reason why I do that is because you can max out the points in this room, which is great. So, we'll be leaving this room at about 10,000 points. Usually, you don't need the top level with 10,000 points. So, this sort of extra minute or two adds up. You know, if you're only doing one or two, I find it really hard to sort of sesh out the raids, then it's ideal because you're sort of maximizing what you've got. If you've got an hour, you just want to send one, it'll take you about 45, 55 minutes in that sort of way. And you just know you're gonna get a maximum points, maximum purple chance compared to the sort of the usual 59, 60,000 points or whatever you get. Do you know what? it's been so long, I can't remember, so what I normally do is just drop them at the map at the brazier. Like this brazier here. So just watch the points go up. Boom, 10k points. Do I play with that? Didn't make the chest, what am I doing? Oh, I'll do it after. Again, you sort of do these old light comms and you figure out the play. So I don't know how the hell Orm's going to go. So I'm just... It's too loud. For those who don't know, just stand back here in shadow. If you have a bofa, you can bofa. I probably think the fang is better. You have to weird learn that weird walk where you walk at a diamond, but I'm sure after like five or six raids... It'll become easier. I know a lot of people bring the Arc Light as well. Apparently the Arc Light is really good against the Demon. It is a Demon, so you get the accuracy buff. I've never done it personally, but yeah. So as you can see, it took about five minutes to do the, the milking prep. But you're still getting points now, which is crazy. I'll summon a Thrall. Get ones. So that's what it is. Our next room's interesting. Uh, ice demon. Not ice demon? Shamans. Shamans are interesting. Just a couple of easy traps you can do. Then raids with teammates with shamans and it just goes downhill really quickly. Everyone's got different lures. I'll show you the lures that I use. It seems to be the easiest. So we're going to build that. We don't need any of that. You can use that as emergency supplies if you don't get Stuff from the, what should we call it, the scabs. Arrange stuff on, I'll just drink that. Basically the whole concept is the run between those two tiles. Every single time you see him attack, you run to the other tile. Then just run over here. You do have to identify 
which shaman will aggro you because this shaman will wander sort of on this side of the room and that shaman will wander on that side of the room and this one shouldn't attack me. He shouldn't, I should be outside his aggro range. Uh, I haven't got the plugin or just haven't set it up to make sure that this one's highlighted. But if you've got any sort of uh, ideas or you can just put it in the comments on how I can highlight just that one shaman just so you don't accidentally aggro this one because he could be out here. And that one could be in that corner and you think, oh, great. Got this one, this is the one I need to attack, but then the one I just kill sort of aggroes you and then just screws up the whole safe spot. So as soon as I see him attack, step here and boom, he just jumps on you, run over to the corner and just repeat. You can summon a for all. Take up the range and that's floor one basically done. We'll move on to the old prep phase, which is wonderful. Now they've added the no seed dibber. They kind of just have to grab a rake, not a rake, a spade. They have to grab a spade, no problem. And these two, I always put my magic gear back on. Key to challenge mode is having sort of your inventory organized, nice and easy. No stress. He's dead. We've got our seeds, we did. So I always put my magic gear back on. Passage, uh, I normally grab a spade. Beads, uh, rejuvenate my run. It's really weird that there's no animation for the spade. I wish they sort of grabbed it off the wall. Throws me off every time. So I always bank my arranged stuff and deposit it all. Go in here. I'm only making 20 brews and 8 restores. I find that's more than enough to get the job done. You will use less than what you think, especially if you pick up the stuff at Vanguard's. Vanguard's obviously hit and miss. They're great, or not great. And the weather melee spawns. Put that in there. We got our uh, spade. Hopefully we... Uh, to replant the seeds. It's very rare you have to replant the seeds. Yeah, so. 20 brews, 7 restores is great. And if you have a look at our points, we're already at 14,000 points. And uh, we're even on the second floor. Just gonna let our inventory fill up a second. Health and such back from the overload. Oh, nice and easy. Shared, but the Boom, boom. I just make 10 at a time. I'm not too worried again about the speed of things. These are supposed to be nice relaxing raids, no stress. Sort of get there when you get there. Sort of thing you do after work, you know? You fancy a Chambers of Zeric, but then you realise that you don't want to run speed running strats and Phoenix with a rope and all this stuff. It just doesn't really appeal to me. I'm just after a, a chill time. Boom. Now we've got to prepare for vanguards. So what I do is I grab out all my melee stuff, including the light bearer, because I use that for the final floor. Then my range stuff. Book. Uh, stamina potion, my overload, and then in the shared I take out three Brews and a restore. We pick out, we pick out, we pick out, we pick up, if I can speak, everything from the vanguards. Uh, that's quite important. Just gives us that safety buffer, really. So I'm going to overload now. And then down. So we got thieving at the vanguards. Now, hopefully, the Melia will spawn here. If the Melia doesn't spawn here, that's always a safe spot. And I'll show you what I mean. We'll see. 
we go. Uh, yes, the melee spawns here. So the melee will absolutely ruin your day. You want to step under him as much as you can. So we need to be over here. So the melee's over here. That's great, because this is now the safe spot. Over there is the safe spot. Oh, as you can see, he absolutely ruined you. What did I just reset? Oh, yeah. Just got to kind of wait. Can, but I don't want to take damage. So we're going to chase this one. Let's roll. Essentially, that tile there I have marked is safe from the melee to attack whatever vanguards there. So when you sort of try ridding them, just have to kind of see where they're going. So he's gone over here. Basically, the melee spawns there. You just run between these two. Apologies, explaining things whilst I'm trying to do things isn't my strong suit. Just kind of narrating what's going on. Thing about the ranger, I'm sure if you're doing challenge modes, you know. Yeah. Damage. Is that through prayer? I don't want to hit that. Oops, that's wrong. He will absolutely wreck your face. Always good to stand under the range of vanguard, to be fair. Melia now. This guy, you can hit him with shadow if you have a shadow. See that time that didn't work. Hopefully we can kill them here. Ignore all this crap a bit. I have no idea what this means. I guess I've got plugins plugged in. Just displaying shit I don't need. That was chance. <laughs> so I just take all the brews. Uh, I don't bother with the enhance and things like that. So I have everything there. Revitalization. Might as well drop that one. Take that one. And now we're on to the next room that we can absolutely milk out of at some point. Now this one's not as good as the ice demon room because you can't. Drop a ton of them and just keep putting it in as soon as it reaches 30. Get over and just put this into there. Let's make my range stuff. Just wear that. Using it. Now we're going to be switching into that later on, so we're going to keep that. What I like to do is find the bats. So the bats are a good point to eat them. So what I'll do, I'm on 11 health, that shouldn't kill me. Yeah, I'm not going to eat that. In a second. So these are more than enough supplies to get through Vespula. Goal at the moment is just getting 28 grubs, dropping them by the chest, and then. Ah, meowing at me now. Hello, Pixel. You okay? Don't know if you can hear the cat. Hopefully not, because she's uh, got her headphones on. So it's hard to hear, so she could be, oh, come this way. Get over here, we drop them, run back. We'll get our run energy back in a minute, worst comes to the worst, uh, that's why we've got a stand pot with us. See you below, back. Just 28 grubs again. 
that is on long range, yeah, that helps with the older. I love this update with the stackable grubs and whatnot. I can't believe there ever was non stackable grubs. Like, it just feels so. so wrong. So, yeah, as you can see, the points went from 19,000 all the way up to 23,000, which is just bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. So, we have that and that. So this is how I like to have it. Yeah. That's so we're gonna get a fresh overload, walk in. Take like that. I'm so stingy. That change our quick pros to that and that. Run straight in. Now you I don't think the frawls can hit the portal, so I never bother. Frawls, but Dear Lord, does the shadow absolutely run down this pool? Now I normally combo eat using the bats because the bats are points to eat them. The more we can get out of the bats, the better. Got the pools for a second. With the whole new update, it's pretty rare that the grubs come out. Even with a bofa, a bofa is more than enough for this. I know Purdom, it's dinner time soon. This is why I can't just sash them out, especially with people. So like, oh, max it. This room will now give you, was that it? That was it. This room will now give you a ton of stuff. So, a restore to bruise. Run through it. Always good to get your health up as high as you can whilst running into the next room, especially if you're going to be tanking them. But as you can see, we're at a solo raid sort of point now. Did a little bit under, but... Yes, yeah, so I have these two tiles marked, which is what I use to kill the mystics. It's up to you what tiles you use. I know a lot of people stand by the door. So every single time your weapon comes off cooldown, just uh again. Again, sort of if you don't have a shadow, uh both are, is more than enough. I think getting a low pipe for this might be even better. But you absolutely slap these. These can hit hard. These can hit like 30s. So I always just tick eat them. Shadow's not the best for these, but honestly, it just does the job. You just tick eat. Every time you see them go into attack, you sort of get a rhythm for it. So you see it attack. You ideally just want to drink a restore every couple of times that you. After brew, the last thing you want is your magic level being like level 70. You not hitting at all. We're high enough health now. I could restore, but there's no point. After this one, actually. Just run across, grab the crystal. It's the girlfriend home from my dance class. Hello. I have not fed the cat. I'm just recording a video of second. It's all right. I'm just doing a chambers run through. How I sort of mummy milk my points. It's all right. Okie dokie. So we're going to be using melee. I don't take shadow with me uh, on this floor just because it is so RNG based. It's unreal. Even with the changes at Muta, it's still a massive raw pain in the ass. So I just like to bank everything, uh, grab out. Range gear, so reason why I bring the salve, bronze axe and the pickaxe. So let's put that at the bottom. Just 
spend time familiarizing yourself with the inventory. We have a stamina potion there. So I always bring three revitalize and the rest brews. You probably won't get through these brews. I've had raids where I have got through them, but that's only when the muted owl tree doesn't chop. Uh, if you're higher than eight, you would cut him, then for better times than I am. I don't chop trees too well, so there is that. So we're just gonna wallop this guy. I'm only 85 mining, so it might not be the fastest kills ever. However, it is good fun. Ooh. What's overload? Need to. Should always be overloaded. Don't heal up. This is a noob mistake. Vasa is going to knock you down to low HP. You want to. Be as low as you can. She'll hit you for, I think it's like 70% of your max HP or whatever HP you are. So if you're sort of 30 health, she's going to hit you for like a 20 odd. Like two thirds of your health. Gives you time to brew up and uh, get your health back and ready to dodge the first attack. Now what is annoying about Vasa is that stupid delay for the prayers to turn on again. It's not fun. One likes it. We on. And spec if you want. I can't remember whether it helps or not. Need to check the wiki on that one. See whether the higher mind level, if someone knows, then yeah, just put it down. Comments whether that helps or not. But to be fair, is it sort of like just cozy? Not really too worried about it. As long as the raid gets done and it gets done in time, so you have a chance to get in a unique and you get a chance to get in a purple and dust and kits and whatnot. That matters. To so the end of this one now, I'll let's do the step method. Time it, wait a tick, run back there. Forward, wait a tick, run back there. Wait a tick, move forward. They can hit you like that. And they do hit through melee. So before you go in, just make sure that your prayer is on ranged. I was equipped my fang. I need to drop potion. So I'll do that running in and then quickly switch to my range gear. As soon as you get teleported you can start eating so I'm gonna eat three lots of this. Restore, just focus on eating, run back, attack boss, summon for all. For all. Boss. Get one more hit in there, maybe I can't. Just spec the crap out of this. You can drink your stamina now. Well, any tick loss. It's mainly just don't spec if it's only got a little bit of health left because you're most likely going to kill it. Click that. You can sort of walk around in a square, is what I see people do. This sort of zigzag. You'll always dodge it. Hit. Vasa won't heal unless also, well, her healing crystals phase comes to an end, so she'll stay at 271. I believe she'll have sort of natural regen, which I believe is quite high. As you can see, we're not really hitting too much on this, so I don't think we're going to be able to get a third. Usually with about two crystals we can uh, get in, unless we have like god tier bang specs. It's mainly is just working on getting every single tick you can in. Got to squeeze one more in. Couldn't on that side. I probably could have done. We might be able to get this one. No, we didn't. Cool. Again, you don't eat. You just do as much DPS as you can. Walk in a square. Fifty-six health. So I'm only going to eat twice here. Too much. Summon another for all. He's running my way. Just watch out because he can absolutely lawnmower you. I think that's it. That is it. Cool. I like healing up. Uh, I've got 50 seconds left on our overload, but he drops overload, so quite matter. So I grab an aid and I always recommend grabbing a twisted 
Moot Dial, you brew it down all the time. Uh, if you don't have the restore, or you don't want to wait for your overload to redo, then just grab that. But you always want to be sort of 120 for Moot Dial. This makes it go quicker because he can hit absolutely crazy numbers. Now this guy, you want him over here. If he's not over here, you can just run behind the flower, stand on this tile, and he'll be trapped. So summon a Thrall. Now if you want to br bring him over here more, you just stand here. And he'll get trapped. As soon as he tries to melee us, boom. That's it. Trapped. Easy. Done. Next it was quite easy. You just sort of run around. I like to do is I'll drink a twist here rather than overload because if I overload this early sometimes mute dial isn't dead in time. You can get pretty crap mystics sometimes. So we want to set both of these to melee so we just run around. Be ready to brew because these two oh this one is not on melee now it is so don't attack them you set to melee as you can see 39 wait up here boom Summon another thrall around here. Where is not an issue. Shouldn't have to eat. We are going to overload. Or going into muted dial, so that'll be another brew down, but it means we've got a cozy amount of brews. Now, if I brought Ancestral and the Shadow, I only have three or four brews to go in here. And going in here with three or four brews for the Shadow is just. Here's the thing, it's good, but. Also really, really frustrating because sometimes you get clears and you take no damage at all. Oh, I need to string that. Go that and go that. Oh, he might come round, he's come round, cool. That's another safe spot there. There's another one just over here, just over in the corner. He'll get trapped there and you just stand there. There's ever one sort of over here. I know in team sometimes he comes around that way, but yeah. Uh, pop him down, as you can see. We drank the Swisted, so our range is as high as it can be. What we need to be, so we can start overloading now, I suppose. So drink that just for safety. Get this down. Remember to always put the Anguish back on. Sometimes forget. I like to wear the plate body going in. He's going to melee me if he's right by the door. Or maybe not. No, he did melee me. Cool. So chop the tree, he might troll like this and come in last second, so chop the tree, hit the tree, hit, as soon as you see the, you can hit, drink a brew, chop the tree, hit, drink a brew, chop the tree, hit the tree, do a doll, hit the tree, do a doll, as soon as you see the hit splat on the tree, you can drink a brew, hit the new doll. Sort of the rhythm, so you want to stay as high health as you physically can. What I do is I melee. This is a fairly clean kill, actually. I melee this guy, I do the step under method, I just go on top of him and just wait two or three ticks, wait until he starts moving. Just basically use my fang specs up. Just wallop him with the fang, basically. So, nice high health. The trick with the overload is if you have your overload timer there, is to eat sort of every 15 seconds. So as you can see, we're at 32, so I'm going to eat there. And my stats, which are up here. I'm currently playing with a new game frame, so I'm not used to where all these are. But it maintains the 120. You'll be in situations where you can't maintain the 120. So that's the reason why I've got the Twisted. You should have more than enough brews, but... If you see him switch to Mage, you can use the same attack three times in a row. After this third time in a row is when he switches, so he'll now use range a minimum of three times. So when he uses magic on you, you know the next two attacks are going to be Mage. So you can pray against that. This is like the humblest muter. Okay. It's going to brew up because he can. So as you can see, it's going to be a little while, so I'll just drink that range potion. So I know his next two attacks are magic. Yeah. Pick up this. Fairly, uh, fairly humble kill. So uh, going into all, we're at uh, 43,000 points. Bad. And, uh, 
got 36 minutes in, but we've got an hour and 10 minutes, I believe. It may be slightly more. Hour and 15, something like that to complete it. So we've got all the time in the world. Just make sure you touch the energy. Then prepare yourself for on. You have to concentrate. Still, just a pain. You can see so far it's all been fairly clean, fairly easy. I always like to keep all this just in case I die. Happens too frequently, but can happen. Just raise your inventory how you like it. I always bring two stands with me in case I don't hit Dragon Warhammers. Uh, so we take that, take that, take that, take that, take that. So we wear that. Put that in. In. I don't bring the cape with me just yet. Ooh. The shadow is good enough as is, so let's drop those two and look at that. I'm just going to quickly pause the recording and then go to the toilet because I don't have the toilet. Uh, be back. Okay, I'm back. Let's uh, pop up. Smash this down, make sure we've got everything. We've got thralls, we've got the lance. We didn't actually bring in the. Because that makes things interesting if you do that. Go in like that, cool. Magic, to run in the middle. Drop a potion, that on, summon a thrall, and we start a flame phase. Stand here. So we hit one spec, so that's nice. Right. So I don't do the shadow method at the moment. Um, I just haven't quite got used to it. I found myself getting really, really annoyed dying to the random flame walls and such that happen during tanking the one hit on this side. So I just thought. I'm not in this sort of speed time constantly. I just want these raids done. I want the maximum amount of points that I possibly can. Do uh, this is the way to achieve it. I'm just glad that we hit Dragon Warhammer uh, head. Dragon Warhammer hit. This is just fairly easy. We got to be careful. And up the four to one though. My timer was slightly off there, but a three to one here. So that's, that's the four to one done. So in the flame phase, I like to walk to this tile. Then, oh, I think I just lost a tick because it lagged. So I'm just going to wait here and boom. Yeah, that sucks. I like to just run here just in case of flame wall. Boom, four to one set up again. happened on that first one how I lost that tick but it's all right just three to one this was laggy do you see that again all hit so far it's nice to have the melee thrall on the hand because he basically guarantees it, which makes sure the head turns, and that's kind of like what the objection, objection, objective is. Especially if you've done mage running back in the day, uh, using a trident, you'd splash, and then he'd face middle, and you have to run all the way over there, and then you get like five or six splashes in a row, and you get really, 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 really annoyed with it. So, thankfully, mage for all, melee for all, just kind of like eradicated that problem. So, cool. magic for all. So, yeah. Interesting. Still here, wait for him to face the middle, and then boom. He prayed just yet. We 
mean, if there's any setups and whatnot that you guys recommend in the chat, let me know. I'm still learning. I kind of watched a guide once and sort of tried to figure out things myself. Uh, I used to do sort of four to two. Then I realised I've just only got to do three to one and then I'll be in four to one territory. So that's kind of how I learned to do that. Especially with some uh, guides from people in the bank. Let me have a special we do for attacks and whatnot, but there's a lot for me to learn. I just like these cosy arms, loads of food, loads of points. So, uh, overload in a second. So, one. I believe that's a three to one I need to do. I'll be in the cycle to keep that. A walking pattern that I like to do. As you can see, the mistakes are, are there today. An acid run, basically I just do this. We don't die. No idea what's going on there. That was awkward. That was a pretty crap uh, thing. Again, it's just when you're recording, you kind of have peripheral vision of watching the screen on the opposite side. I should really minimise that. You just make mistakes, but this isn't supposed to be a mistake-free run. This is supposed to be sort of a honest of what it's like doing challenge modes. So we'll suck at that. Boom, we actually hit a Dragon Ball Hammer. Come on, let's hit a second one. Never lucky. I want to get sick after him. Drink that again. One sick after him, and then one more hit. Really should have done the sideways bit there. Because it's flame phase. And I'll run back. Oop. So that would have been a flame wall, that's why you do that whole run thing. Good timing. Problem is I didn't want to autopilot on the older floor there because I'd reset. This one, go over that way. Yeah. Rare shadow splash. That's, uh, happens actually more than I think.
overload looks like it's probably going to end just as we go into head phase, which makes things uh, interesting. Got a range stuff, just gonna dodge the head here. So we can get on this. Alright, 52 health. Ideally we don't want to brew. Have to. Expire in a second. Stun. Blood now. Spam that. It's that good. Really. And adjust. Just gonna make sure that it helps. I just always make sure we know where the head's going. Now we've recovered. So that's doing as much damage as possible. Probably when not getting did every five seconds. Really not good ahead phase, it's my weakness. Hoping for a twisted. This twisted bow helps for dragon on the crossbow. Oh, chanced so hard. Good bruise, people. Supposed to get me to and nothing that sucks, but as you can see. 67,000 points, not bad, and that has to be the worst drop you could get. Lizard and Fangs and Dynamites, unless you're a Blast Miner. That's basically it. Uh, sometimes you get about 68,000 points. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference is. It took about 50 minutes, so if you're only doing like one or two raids, it's just easy enough, you know? Just gets the points up, get the points per hour. It's not great for points per hour, actually, saying that, but yeah, that's sort of a run through of a semi-easy sort of shield challenge mode obviously you're probably better than I am so maybe even better for you but yeah there we are 65 so uh, let's have a look raid data tracker let's see what we've got so if we go to CM only and solo we're currently 2.54 million points and we have seen one drop which is a dex Person. How many kills long is it? 41. So two and a half points. Two and a half mil points and 41 raids. That's not bad. That's really not bad. I think the Tebow rate is actually I'm not quite sure. I think it's 36 million points, something stupid like that. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Hopefully see a kit soon. Uh a dust would be great. Tebow obviously make everything easier. So you know I don't use the shadow for that third floor. Tebow, just absolute nuke, but we still had like what three, four brews left. Sometimes you get a chunk along on like that, but other times you just uh yeah, get lucky and these are sort of the loots. Why you should do it. I mean I haven't done a farm run in ages and you can see all these grimy ones are the things that I've got from my solo CMs. So five hundred range potions, a thousand lamidine pots, uh anti fires, aventos, snapdragons, cannon times, quarms, not so much quarms. Uh irrits and toe flax. I've all just come from this, and then I've just been doing my birdhouse runs, and yeah, it all stacked up. But that is my just chill 
easy challenge mode raids. I'm going to be streaming them weekdays. The actual goal really is to get to one kill count a day. So we're currently at 65, so we're massively behind. I mean, it's almost like a third through this year already, which is crazy. So we're doing a lot of catch ups. This is my Cox log so far. You've got Ancestral, full Ancestral in 65 or 250. I can't complain. It's been really good. Quite a few of them were sort of those mega scales, like a 3 plus 4, I believe it is. So about 135k points per raid. Uh, yeah, that was my first item. So, uh, yeah, we're looking for a Dragon Hunter Crossbow. For Ulm Head, uh, we've got Dragon Claws. That'd be great. For TOB, uh, Din's Bottle Walk. Really, really want one. Good for the Colosseum, good for prayer training, and the Elder Mole, just for Tecton. I mean, that'd be fun. Just to pull one of them. Please TO next. But yeah, you, you can't complain. And obviously, Dust would be great, but also, it'd be nice to get the capes at some point. So, yeah. There we are. Great bits of uh, some use. <laughs> Enjoy milking the points. Enjoy the purple chances. I think it was like 7.8%. Not quite a 400 TOA, but I mean, it would do. It would do. All right. Have a good day.